afternoon. How is everyone today? I hope you're good and well and looking forward to making some pizza. I know I've had quite a few messages about uh, people looking forward to this session. So uh, hopefully you're, you're all ready, you've got your ingredients ready, you've printed off your um, recipe and uh, we can start cooking. Just wait for it. Hi Em. Hello Sarah and Ella. How are you today? It's a lovely day again. I think we need to make the most of it I, in the garden because I think it might be raining tomorrow. But anyway, so, and the boys are very excited about this one. Oh, that is really good. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm excited about it because it's so delicious as well. And the best bits about this whole thing is, hey Cass, it's really, really easy to do. Um, so if everyone's ready with their ingredients, um, let's start cooking. First of all, I'm gonna wash my hands because we are getting our hands dirty again. Hello Em. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be getting our hands really mucky um, in the in the dough. So uh, if everyone's okay with their ingredients and they've got flour, that's brilliant. If you haven't got flour, um, you can use the just put your toppings onto maybe some um, flatbreads or uh, pita bread uh, or make pita bread pockets and bake them exactly the same. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my hands and let's get going. One. Okay, so some people haven't got a uh, plain flour, but I have made and tried and tested these recipes, one with plain flour and one with self-raising flour, okay? So the recipe calls for plain flour and a couple of teaspoons of baking powder. If you've only got self-raising flour, just use that, but don't put the baking powder in, okay? This is a super, super quick done. It's so easy to make. So I'm going to weigh everything. It's 250 grams of flour. And this makes two good size pasty pizzas, which are otherwise known as calzones. 250. Is everyone measuring up okay? Well, you might already have it already measured out. Let's have a look. Right, okay. So there's 250. Let's leave the flour ready for us because... Um, we're going to have to dust our hands and dust the work surface as well. Okay, so into my plain flour, if you've used it, we want to put some baking powder. Now, baking powder is really lumpy, so make sure you pop the baking powder through a sieve because you don't want to be biting into lumps of baking powder because it's not very nice to taste. Okay, if you haven't got a sieve, just squeeze it through your fingers to get the lumps out, okay? So that's two small teaspoons of baking powder. Okay, so put in that. Okay, then we have one egg. And what do we need to do with the eggs? Do you remember what we do with eggs? We don't put them directly in. We have to crack it into a little dish first to make sure that the egg's not bad. So let me just get a little dish. Okay, so crack the egg, gentle tap, crack it into the bowl. It doesn't matter if it breaks because we're going to um, stir it up anyway in a minute. So in that goes. You want a little bit, pinch of salt. Everyone alright so far? Give me a thumbs up. I hope you are. Um, now, we want two tablespoons of oil. This can be vegetable oil, it can be, I'm using a bit of olive oil. Um, olive oil's got slightly more flavour to it than vegetable oil, but it's entirely up to you, okay? So, two tablespoons, there's one, two. Okay, right, let's get rid of the scales now. We're just about ready to, to make a mess. I'm going to get some water in a little dish. Okay. Right then, let's get messy. So take a spoon, any spoon, and just start stirring this in. It's really lumpy to start with. This is why we need the water 
to make turn it into the dough. Okay? And in a minute, I'm going to get my hands in there. Can't wait to get my hands in there, actually. Right, so I'm going to pop a tiny bit of water in at a time. So maybe a, a tablespoon at a time. I'm going to put my hands in there now. How's it going? Oh, how much oil? Two tablespoons. One, two. Add two spoons of water at a time so that you don't make the dough too wet. All right, so it just needs to keep, start coming together. If it gets too wet, um, if it gets too wet, the mixture gets too wet, don't panic. Just put a little bit more flour into the mixture. Okay, it's coming together. I'm going to have to get some more water, I think. Yeah, it smells nice. This isn't the traditional way of making pizza dough. We usually make pizza dough with yeast and uh, very strong bread flour, but we, we're doing it this way because it's much, much quicker. We don't have to let it rest. We can just roll it out and bake it straight away and then eat it quicker. I think that's the key, isn't it? Right, I'm gonna get a little bit more water because I haven't got enough in there. Right, now it's gotta be careful, it doesn't get too wet. There we go, it's all coming together now. It's a bit like a pastry mix, really. Nearly there. That's it. We don't want to have any little bits of flour remaining, so it's all got to come together in one big dough ball. Okay, right. Now, when you've got something that looks like that, it's very sticky, I told you you're going to get messy. Hello, Emma. Right, so let's get rid of the bowl and the spoon. Right, now, where you're going to roll out your pastry or your um, pizza, make sure that you've got lots of flour on the work surface, okay? Can you see that all right? See that? It's really sticky. Now, you can just rub all the dough off your hands rub them together. Girls are loving this, brilliant. Oh, I've forgotten to say, make sure you've got the oven on and if mums and dads or whoever's helping you now, make sure you've got a baking tray, pop, pop it in the oven so it's hot. Okay, so the oven needs to be on at about 200 degrees, okay? Right, we've got our dough ready. So what you need to do, do you see what I'm doing? I'm kind of pushing it together gently with my hands. Now, I'm going to put it into two because this makes two. So cut it in half and then we make little balls, okay? Can you make just a ball in your hand? Because what we're going to do with this ball, we're going to roll it out into a circle. Okay, so I'm just going to make one. Because it's quicker. I'll pop that one there. I'll make that one afterwards. Right, so what I'm doing now, I'm just going to turn it around. So keep turning it over and just patting it down with your hands and get a nice circle. Alright, now, what I didn't put on the equipment list, on, uh, on the recipe, was you need a rolling pin. All right, if you haven't got a rolling pin, use something like a jam jar or what else? Let me just show you what else you could use. I've got a water bottle like that. You can just roll it, you can roll it with that. So if you haven't got a rolling pin, find a bottle or jam jar or something and use that. Okay, so I've got the work surface nice and floured. Hiya, Joe. Take your rolling pin, make sure that there's flour on the bottom and on the top, and just press gently down. What we're trying to do is create a nice big circle. Nice and thin. How's it going? How are you doing? How's your circles coming? Good? Now, 
What you need to do as you're going as you're going along, you need to lift it up and drag the flower back into the middle so it doesn't stick. All right. And ever so often, do you see what I'm doing? I'm rolling it around with my hands. It's becoming sticky, so I'm going to put a tiny bit more flour on the top. Here we are. You want it nice and thin. And obviously, the bigger the better. Right. I think that's about right. This is going to make a nice size pizza. Now, can you lift it up? Make sure that you can lift it up because when you start putting the fillings in, if you can't lift it up, it will all get stuck to the work surface. Okay? I hope everyone's all right with this so far. There we are. Do you see what I'm doing? There we are. Okay. I'm going to wash my hands quickly because they're all flowery. One sec. Give me a thumbs up if you're doing all right. Got any questions, make sure you ask away. All right, make sure that you're asking me any questions you've got. Okay, right. I am going to put my pizza on baking paper so it doesn't stick to the, work, uh, to the baking tray. And it makes it really easy to lift it onto the on the baking tray when we're done. Okay, so if whoever can help you do this, lift it and drop it onto the baking paper. All right. Okay. Now it's time to get creative. So I am using. I've got a tin of chopped tomatoes that I've just put some herbs in. So I've used a bit of basil and a bit of oregano. Do you see, I've just um, squished up some chopped tomatoes. If you haven't got chopped tomatoes, you can use tomato puree. You can, you can use whatever you like with, in this. I haven't got any mozzarella, so I'm just gonna use some cheddar cheese. What you want to do, make sure that you leave a little gap on the edge of where you're putting your sauce. Can we freeze half the dough? Yes, you can freeze half the dough for another day. Excellent idea. Now, at this stage, you, don't, you, could, you could make a whole flat pizza if you want. You don't have to make it into a pasty pizza. You could make a whole flat pizza and just pop it straight in the oven or make a load of mini ones, okay? It's entirely up to you. But I'm showing you a really cool sort of like little pasty version. So if you're, if you're following me, what you want to do is put the topping on half the pizza, okay? Only half. I like tomatoes, so we're gonna have extra. Right, that's that. I have got some wild garlic, funnily enough. So I'm just gonna break all this in. You can use uh, onions, um, what else can you use? You can use, honestly, you can use absolutely any item you like. You have ham, pineapple, um, you could even make a sweet one with Nutella if you wanted. That would be really yummy. Yeah, this is that wild garlic from um, from my um, from the boy's grandma's garden. How about that? Right, garlic in. I'm doing. I've got some chorizo. A couple of bits of chorizo in the middle. There we are. There's four bits there. And now, like I said, I haven't got any mozzarella. If I had mozzarella now, I would be pulling it and just popping it in. But I haven't, so I'm going to use cheddar cheese. If you haven't got one of these, you want to get one of these because they're brilliant. So you just grate, grate it and it's in the box. Can, can we see your base? Whoop! Nearly dropped that! Can you see it okay? Is it, have you not got enough view? Is that a bit better? I hope that's all right. Um, right. So cheese going in, I like lots of cheese as well, so you put as much in as you like, or if you don't like it, don't put it in. Okay, so this is, this is quite the nice bit really. So you pull over the plain bit over the top of the filling, okay? Like that. Now, at the edges, you can, you can do two things. You can either use a fork, and you could go up, you can seal it like that. That's a really easy way. Or you can roll it with your fingers 
like a pasty and squeeze, squeeze the ends together. All right, do you see what I've done? Roll it all the way round. It might squish out a little bit, don't worry about it. Okay, so there's my half moon calzone pizza, ready to go in, okay? Everything all right with everybody? Make sure, if you can, to get as, as these edges as, as uh, squeezed together as possible. Now, I'm going to top it with a tiny little bit of flour, because that's what you do in Italy. And this is kind of Italian, isn't it? Right. Now, if you are making this with an adult, you need to ask them for some help now. Because you're going to take the hot baking tray out of the oven. I'm going to pour it out now. And the reason why we heat it up first is so that it's super hot to cook the base. Okay, so lift, this is why we put it on the baking paper before, so we can lift it on easily. So you pop it on, you see this, but I popped it on the middle like that, okay? And that's going in the oven now for about 15 to 20 minutes. On the top shelf, and I've got to sit and wait until it's done. Now, in good uh, Blue Peter fashion, I did make one earlier, like I told you, and this is what it looks like. There we go. That is what you should be coming out with in the end. All right, it's nice and crispy. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a thin um, pastry, pie pastry. Um, and then let me show you what happens when you put it in the middle. This one's not hot, hot anymore. I made it a, about an hour ago. You cut it. It's all like filled up in the middle. Do you see? How long will in I? How long? And you're going to have to tell me that again because it's, I'm not sure what that means. How long will in I come mean? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, I can't work it out. In the oven, it's. It's uh, 15 to 20 minutes, but keep an eye on it. It's usually around 15 minutes, but it just does depend on how your oven functions. Okay, so yeah, so this one earlier was cheese, just cheese and tomato. Um, how long in oven? Yeah, it's um, 15 to 20 minutes then. Okay, um, yeah, so I'd love to uh, see how you're all getting on. Make sure that you've taken lots of pictures as, you, as you're making. And then make sure that you show me your pictures when you know put them on the on the on the group. That would be brilliant. Um, what day are we today? What day is it? Oh, it's Thursday, isn't it? Yeah. So our next session together here on this page is on Tuesday at two o'clock. Okay. I think we might do. Do you know what? I don't know what I'm going to do. I'd like you to tell me what I should be cooking next week. Tell me, give me some suggestions. There are a lot of Emma's cooking. <laughs> can you reheat them later? Yes, you can reheat them later. Absolutely fine. I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna pop this one in the microwave for the boys in a minute for a little snack because they, um, uh, well, well, they'll they'll want this in a minute. They were they were asking if I could eat it just a minute ago before I came on here, but I said no because I needed to show you what it looked like. So yes, you can absolutely reheat them, either in the microwave or pop them back in the oven. If you pop it in the oven, it might dry out a bit, so I would wrap it in a bit of foil and stick it in the oven. Okay, but that's fine. Got any other questions? Vegetable curry. Oh yeah, should we make a curry? That's a really good idea. We could, we could do a vegetable curry that's really super easy to do. And it's, it's are you, do you know what? I've got it all ready, I know exactly what I'm going to do. So I will get my recipe hat on and get an email over to you over the weekend with all the ingredients that you need. In fact, I'll try and do it tomorrow so that you, if you're going shopping over the weekend or you need to order anything, you'll have it in for next week. So uh, that's fantastic, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me, it's brilliant. 
hope you're enjoying everything. Please, 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 please share your pictures because it's lovely to see you all uh, getting stuck in. Um, make sure that if you've made a mess in the kitchen, you tidy it up. You, you, you help. Don't just walk away now. You have to tidy up. It's really important. That's what every good chef learns to do. You always have to tidy up. It's better if you tidy up as you go along and then it doesn't make uh, tidying up so difficult at the end. But, um, anyway, guys, have um, a lovely, lovely day. It is, what's this? Just to go, well, of course, past 20 past two. So you've got a lovely, you've got a few more hours yet left in the garden. So have a fab day. Thank you ever so much for joining me. I can't wait for that to cook because um, it's making me super, super hungry. Have a fab day. Bye.